Well, hello, Scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Now, in a recent video where I recovered uh, silver from tantalum capacitors, I used the lye and sugar method to convert that silver chloride that I got out of them into silver metal, and that worked pretty well. But I'm going to show you another method that's even easier than the lye and sugar method. And if you're not in a big hurry to get your silver, this is a good way to do it. So I've got some more silver chloride down here in this beaker. Covered with just a little bit of water. Maybe a millimeter or so of water over the top of it. That's all that's in there. Nothing else. Now I'm going to add a few drops of sulfuric acid drain cleaner to this. Not a lot. Just a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops. Okay? That's all. Okay, I'm going to swirl it around a little to mix it up. And then I've got this old aluminum heat sink right here. Just going to drop this right in there like that into the middle of the uh, silver chloride. Going to put a lid on it. And I'm going to stash this in the back of my fume hood and forget about it for a day or two. And then we'll see what's going to happen. I think you'll be interested. I think you'll be impressed. This is like magic, okay? So I'll be back in a, in a day or two. I was just going to put this in my fume hood and leave it for a couple of days and come back to it, but I couldn't resist having a look at it. It's only been a few hours. Look at the black spreading around the uh, heat sink in there. There's some magic going on. I'm going to put this back in the fume hood and leave it until it's all black. Okay, so here we are. The reaction is complete. It actually only took about a day and a half. I'm surprised. It's a little quicker than I was expecting, maybe because it's warmed up out here. But take a look in there. Look at that. All that silver chloride, that snow white silver chloride, has been converted into gray silver metal. What sort of crazy black magic alchemy is this you're asking? Well, I will explain. But first, let me get this uh, heat sink out of here and rinse the silver off of it. And there's still plenty of aluminum here, so I can reuse this a few more times. But this, this reaction takes advantage of the fact that what you've been told about silver chloride your entire life about it being insoluble in water is wrong. It's only not very soluble in water. Not totally insoluble. There's always a little bit of the silver chloride in solution whenever it's in water. There is an equilibrium where there's silver chloride in that water. And what happens is I acidified it with a little bit of sulfuric acid as you remember. That's gonna dissolve a little bit of the aluminum out and make the aluminum ions mobile. And what happens is th th when the aluminum and the silver chloride in solution come together, uh, the aluminum is going to steal the chlorine from the silver chloride because aluminum is a much more reactive metal than silver is. So it's going to steal the chlorine from the silver. And the one thing that is more insoluble in water than silver chloride is silver metal. So when that happens, silver metal drops out of solution and stays out of solution. And now there's room in the water for more silver chloride to dissolve and keep that equilibrium up where it wants to be. And then the reaction just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going until all of the silver chloride has been converted into silver metal. So I'm going to give this a few washes with uh, some tap water to clean... Uh, the sulfuric acid and the aluminum compounds out of it, the aluminum sulfate out of it, and uh, we'll see how much uh, silver metal we've got here. Should be interesting. So I'm going to let this uh, settle, decant off the liquid, give it a few more rinses, and then uh, we'll see what we got in there. Okay, so here's our silver after some washes. It's still pretty wet. I'm going to put it on low heat in the fume hood and dry it out, and then we'll be able to weigh it and see how much silver we got here. Looks pretty good, just very fine, but it came from very fine fluffy silver chloride, so that's probably why it looks so fine. Okay, silver's all dried up. 
kind of dried up, got a little bit chunky, and there's a lot of it stuck to the inside of the beaker too, but I don't think there's enough of it to uh, affect the, the weight really. So let's see just how much silver we got using this method. I kind of got distracted and left this on high heat for a while, so it really consolidated and chunkified as it dried out. 8.69 grams. Okay, not too shabby. Hey, what do you say we melt this down and see what kind of a button we're going to get out of it using this method? See if it's a nice button or not. Alrighty, let's try melting down this silver, see what kind of a button we get out of it. Got a uh, well-glazed crucible here. Some water to quench the thing in afterwards. And let me get my gloves on. Don't burn myself. Okay, let me get the torch lit here. Low flame, so I don't blow the silver out all over the place. So I am blowing a few bits out, so we're going to lose a little bit of weight. Get all these little beads to consolidate. Without spilling it. Pretty good looking bead. Nice and shiny. Got a little borax on it. Need to be cleaned off. But uh, yeah, not a bad looking bead. And there's still a few little beads inside the uh, crucible there. Some debris too. So I'm thinking that maybe I didn't uh, wash this stuff as good as I should have before I melted it down. There might have been some like uh, aluminum sulfide, aluminum chloride still in it when it came over. There's some sort of gray debris in there. But we got our bead. I'll give you a close-up look at it. So here's our bead. Still got some borax stuck on it. But look at those flow lines. Nice. And then how shiny it is. Oh my goodness. It is shiny. Yeah, I need to clean the uh, need to clean the borax off of it and uh, add it to my collection. So there you go. So here's the bead after a quick boil in dilute hydrochloric acid. Boy, that is shiny. You can tell that is some pure silver. 
by how nice and shiny that is. Oh my goodness. Nice. Well, all righty. That worked out great. And you know what? While I was working on this bead, I started another batch, and it's almost done. It's only been about 24 hours. I still see a few little white flakes in there, so this needs to sit a little while longer. But this is working great. So, you know, this is a quick and easy way to convert your silver chloride into silver. You don't have to use any caustic lye. You don't have to waste your sugar for your coffee on it. You know, just throw some aluminum in and walk away. And, you know, come back in a day or two and you got, you got silver metal when you had silver chloride. Fantastic. So, yeah, I was pretty enthusiastic about this experiment the first time I did it. You know, got some clean silver out of it. Uh, but uh, the more I do it, and I've done it a few times now, the less enthusiastic I am. Let's, uh, let's get a weight on this silver bead here. Yeah, 5.86 grams. We started out with considerably more solids than that. And we got 5.8 something grams of silver out of it. Now there's a little bit stuck in uh, the crucible here. There's a few little silver beads in there, but what there is in here is a lot of is this gray stuff. And I've done this experiment a few times now, as you can see by how torn up this uh, heat sink is now. It's pretty well dissolved. Pieces are falling off. Um, and what I'm finding is this doesn't work as well as I thought it did at first. Um, only getting partial conversion of the silver into metallic silver. There's still a lot of silver chloride mixed in with that metallic silver. In fact, that's, I think, what this gray stuff is. I couldn't figure that out at first, but now I know. This is silver chloride. It had turned gray from exposure to the light, and it's dissolved in the uh, flux, the borax flux, and stuck in the uh, crucible now. And I've done this like three or four times now, and every time I only get partial conversion of the silver into silver metal. There's still a considerable amount of silver chloride left afterwards. And it is very difficult to fully remove that silver chloride from the very, very fine grains of silver metal that are produced. Very difficult. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, I learned about this technique on a YouTube video I watched from someone who doesn't speak English and wasn't putting a lot of subtitles or captions in his video. I kind of got the gist of it. But when I went back to his channel, after seeing that this really didn't work all that well, I saw that he's gone back to using the lye and sugar method. I guess he was just experimenting with this method too, and after a while he discovered that it didn't work very well either. I mean, there's, there's potential here. Uh, possibly, you know, I've done some experiments with leaving the aluminum in there longer, and that didn't really help. Maybe, I, I, you know, I've also experimented with different acids. I've tried it with hydrochloric instead of sulfuric, and it worked about the same way. Um, maybe experimenting with more or less acid plus different times, I don't know. But really, I think I'm just going to go back to the lye and sugar method because that's super reliable. I get pretty much 100% conversion of the silver chloride over to silver metal. Um, it's really not that difficult. The reagents aren't that expensive. So, yeah. This was an interesting experiment, but I think, you know, on the whole, it's kind of a failure. Is it really just doesn't work that well. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think I've been doing wrong. If you get this working better, let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're making it work. All right, I'd appreciate it. So anyway, I hope you found this video a little bit interesting, educational, informative, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future gold and silver recovery videos. Check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64. If you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing, you'll probably find some stuff of interest to you there. Um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.